I started writing this piece before Christmas and it was going to be a happy story about the koalas of Kangaroo Island who were flourishing. But as some of you will have realised, Kangaroo Island has been on fire and it is thought that 25,000 koalas are dead, which is about half of the island's population. So needless to say, the story has had a drastic edit and a few tears shed for the koalas. The bushfires have ravaged about a third of the island, including Findlay's Chase National Park on the west side of the island, which supported a large population of koalas and was also home to other marsupials such as kangaroos and also rare birds. The Threatened Species Recovery Hub, Deputy Director John Warinarski, who is also a professor at Charles Darwin University, has said that there is almost no considerable habitat remaining for many species, which can lead to local extinction events. The army has been sent to the island to help battle the fires, and wildlife rescuers are searching for injured wildlife on the western side of the island. The Kangaroo Island Wildlife Park, who usually care for around 10 orphaned koalas a year, are expecting about 10 koalas a day. They are having to build more enclosures to house them. Some koalas have been put down as their burns were so severe or they have had serious respiratory injuries. The other problem is that there is very little food available for any koalas that have survived the fires and the park is expecting hundreds of starving koalas in coming weeks. There is a GoFundMe page for donations and information. I've put it at the top of the sources. They need funds to help with veterinary costs, koala milk and supplements extra holding and rehabilitation enclosures, as well as setting up a building to hold supplies to treat these animals. They have a very experienced team of wildlife carers, vets and vet nurses to help them care for the animals that come in. Other wildlife have, of course, been affected by the fires. One of these is the Kangaroo Island Donut, which is only found on Kangaroo Island. It is critically endangered and there were fewer than 500 left. Whether the species has survived or not, it is too early to tell. The koalas of Kangaroo Island were very special and a few hailed them as the species' saviours. This is because koalas face other problems besides their habitat being cut down and being destroyed by fires. Koalas also suffer from chlamydia, a sexually transmitted disease which also occurs in humans and some other animals such as reptiles and horses. Chlamydia has been diagnosed in wild koalas in Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland and South Australia. Whilst infection from chlamydia can be symptomless, other than affecting the fertility of the koala, the koalas can also suffer from keratojunctivitis, which is the inflammation of the cornea and conjunctiva, and urinary tract infections. There is also a chlamydia-free population of koalas on French Island, which I assume is safe at the moment. Koalas are not native to Kangaroo Island. Twenty were introduced here in the 1920s from French Island in Victoria. The French Island koala population is believed to have been founded by a single release of three koalas taken to the island by fishermen in the late 1800s from Coronella, which is situated on the mainland in Victoria. The koalas are disease-free and populations were thriving to the point where this had become a problem. In 1997, the Kangaroo Island Management Project was set up, which aimed to reduce koala densities to a sustainable level, which is estimated at 0.75 koalas per hectare, and so reduce damage to trees. The programme has been effective in reducing koala numbers through non-lethal measures, resulting in an improvement in the condition of the trees. More than 15,000 trees have been planted to restore habitats, as well as 400 large manor gums collared to protect from the koalas overbrowsing. However, the koala population on Kangaroo Island was still deemed by some to be a problem, and in July 2019, the Natural Resources Committee told a South Australian parliamentary inquiry that koalas and various other native animals were reaching unmanageable levels across the state and needed to be culled, poisoned or euthanised. There was a robust response from the Government of South Australia which stated that, and I quote, the culling of koalas or the deliberate spread of disease is not government policy in South Australia. This is a long-standing position with the agreement across state and federal governments and reflects the iconic status and public image of the koala. So luckily the koalas weren't going to be culled and their numbers were going to continue to be regulated using the methods I have already mentioned. Their numbers will no longer be a problem, but a lack of suitable habitat I suspect will be. It has been suggested that koalas on Kangaroo Island could be translocated to other areas on the mainland where their numbers are low. But there are a number of problems with this. Koalas cannot be relocated to New South Wales or Queensland where koala numbers are declining 
as the koala's habitat is limited due to deforestation or fragmentation. The koalas in these areas also suffer from chlamydia, and in one study, fecundity of chlamydia-free females dropped from 71% to 23% after they were moved into a chlamydia-infected population. Koalas from Kangaroo Island are also physically different to those in New South Wales or Queensland, as they are larger and have longer hair which is better suited to the colder climates. Another problem is that koalas in different parts of Australia prefer different types of eucalypts and so many habitat areas are unsuitable. So perhaps the Kangaroo Island koalas were not the saviour koalas that some thought them to be. At the moment it is too early to tell what the future will be like for koalas and indeed the other wildlife on Kangaroo Island. What we do know is that once again, amazing people are giving their time, energy and money to help our iconic furry friends. This help is coming from places as far away as the UK. I have heard of vets sending out medical supplies and there is an organisation called the Animal Rescue Craft Guild, which is based in Australia, which sent out a call for help and now people around the world are knitting, crocheting and sewing pouches for baby marsupials and bats and nests for birds. A friend told me about this and I've started crocheting a pouch for a possum. Thursday saw parts of Kangaroo Island being evacuated as high temperatures and strong winds swept the fires towards two towns. The Kangaroo Island Wildlife Park was evacuated as the fires headed towards Pandana, but its owners decided to stay to try to protect hundreds of animals there. Luckily, the spread of the fires slowed a bit due to some rain and the incredible efforts of the firefighters who worked throughout the night. How incredibly brave and selfless they are. As of Sunday morning in the UK, the wildlife park is safe, but conditions change so rapidly, who knows what tomorrow may bring. Our thoughts and prayers are with Australia, whether you have two, four or no legs. <laughs>